Hey everybody, this is a lecture I gave on Saturday, March 10th, 2018, and this was given to a group of anglers in Ocean Pines. Uh, the reason I wanted to do this video uh, from this lecture is, if you watched the first video I made about using technology to improve fishing success, this is a continuation of that video. So basically that video, while it's kind of really thick, and I would certainly say maybe a bit on the heavy side, um, it's really important information to put together to make a fishing plan, which is what this is going to be about. OK, so we've taken all that information we've gotten over the last five seasons from various social media, plus our fishing experience, what we've logged. And now we're going to put it in, into a plan that we're going to use to catch fish this early spring in the bay. So that's what this is what going to be about. OK, so and I'm talking like right now, March <clears throat> till about mid-May. And then after that, it probably switches over a bit. So that's what I'm going to talk about here. Now, everything on this video is derived from information. So none of this is speculation. This is all results from fishing success, from information gathering, from data mining, things like that. Okay. The plan today is going to be five species of fish on where to catch them their locations, different presentations and rigging to use, and bait you can use to catch it. All the photos in this are from April and May fishing, okay? No photos are from any other time. The five species we're going to talk about are stripers, bluefish, shad, blackfish, tautog, and flounder. Okay, we're going to start with stripers, okay? If you were going out fishing today, right now, boom, early to mid-March, uh, and we actually just posted a video from us fishing right after this lecture, I said fish the Route 90 bridge and marshy islands north of it. I think early afternoon outgoing tide is a good thing. When I was fishing Sunday around there, I was told by some gentlemen that they had much better luck earlier in the day. So maybe mid-morning or so. So take it with uh, for what it's worth. But um, we went in the afternoon and did real well. Now after it begins to warm up and that water temperature comes up over 50 degrees, closer to 55 degrees, the Route 50 Bridge, Commercial Harbor, South Side of the Inlet, Inlet Points, Martha's Landing, the Oceanic Pier. Those are all going to be places that produce stripers once the water heats up a little more, okay? As an example of why you want to fish out going tide in the spring, last year, mid-April, we had an incoming tide around 53 degrees. We had an outgoing tide of 67 degrees. Now, it was an exceptionally warm spring day, so that's a bit of an exaggeration on temperatures. They don't normally switch that much, but it's a, it gives you an idea of why you want to place an emphasis on some of the outgoing tides earlier in the season. Anytime you find warm, clear water, you're going to have success with rockfish, okay? Fish finder setups, if you're going to use live bait like live minnows, on the bottom right picture, you'll see a close-up shot of fish finders. I any of these things I talk about are going to be on the lure video uh, that you can watch, okay, in detail. It'll give you an idea. I'll put a link at the bottom if I remember. All right, so bloodworms, peelers, live minnows are available now. We use a half ounce to one ounce swim baits retrieved slow, slow to medium speed. Any hard plastic you use, you use you know long minnows, things like that that go a little bit slower, uh, small bucktails with plastic trailers, and that's to give you some buoyancy so you can retrieve a little bit slower, okay? Spec rigs always are going to be in the mix with these fish. Uh, it's the best lure in the bay for quantities. Uh, we use the one quarter ounce it's, that's printed on there, a total of a half ounce. Spinner baits like you use for bass are certainly great. And then there's a gentleman that uses Zoom flukes. Uh, he uses pink and he jigs them off the bottom. He's pretty successful at catching some good sized fish. I haven't done it too much. We certainly got one good fish off it last year, but um, it's what he mentions. All right, so make sure you cover ground and find schools of fish. Uh, there are definitely pockets of fish around certain areas at certain times. Cover ground, use it. Also use your side scan and your electronics to find these fish, okay? The largest stripers that were caught the last few seasons that people reported were caught around the South Jetty. So if you're looking for large stripers, maybe keeper stripers, you want to target the South Jetty early season, okay? Next species is bluefish, okay? Large fish tend to be in these warm shallows and near ledges, okay? North of the bay uh, is a great spot to catch uh, large stripers that you may have to search for them. <clears throat> the Route 50 Bridge, the south side of the inlet, inlet points, the fish bowl, the East Channel, these all hold bluefish early season, okay? Uh, incoming or outgoing seem to work pretty well with bluefish. Uh, incoming around the Route 50, we had personal success at. Behind Assateague near Castaways was a good spot to catch bigger bluefish too, okay? Also, plenty of reports about bluefish being caught on the Assateague Bridge around it, also known as the Verrazano Bridge, okay? Really, when bluefish are biting, most anything works, right? Bluefish rigs with cut frozen mullet or fresh bunker works really well. If you use a fish finder setup, 
Uh, you can use live minnows. I'll hit that. Hard plastics are great because they're durable. So long minnows or gotcha plugs work great. You can use small bucktails without trailers on them. Or if you're going to, certainly use cheap ones because they're going to bite a lot of them off. Sometimes you can get them to bite. Many times you can get them to bite when they're active without trailers, okay? Obviously, spec rigs are great again. The half ounce total weight size. Spinner baits work good. And they're nice because they keep your line a little bit away from their teeth, okay? We always use um, wire leader with an angler's clip, okay? So I haven't shown you on a video that, but just basically a wire leader. We snap off the swivel that comes with it and add an angler's clip to it, tactical angler's clip to it. Um, and that helps us a lot. So fine retrieve speeds they like. Many times they like this stuff coming at them fast. Sometimes they like a twitch. And every once in a while they'll like it a little slower. So find out what works. Birds are certainly going to be around where there's some topwater bluefish feeding. And uh, so look for them. They'll help you with them. Topwater bait or wake baits are excellent for bluefish. They love them. They will actively attack them in this area. Okay. Shad, wonderful fun fish to catch with family. Okay. You'll find them, you know, mid-April on. Around the inlet, around the 50 bridge, the fishbowl in the east channel. Incoming or outgoing works. Evening for us worked very well, though we do fish more in the evening. But that was a good time. And then the birds, the sandwich turns, they're great at showing you where these guys are at. Spec rigs all you need. Throw a half ounce total wig spec rig. Colors, white, chartreuse, all that. They tend to hit it all. It doesn't matter. I would go with white and chartreuse to start. Go from there. They're pure lake catch and release fish at this time, so uh, you have to take a picture with them and let them go. Do some CPR. Okay, tall tog, great fish to catch. Uh, inlets, and of course, anywhere rocks, north and south rocks, 50 pilings, second and fourth street bulkheads on Mason's Reef there around the East Channel, Martha's Landing, Stinky Beach. Incoming or outgoing, Finn McCabe indicates that you need water around 48 degrees or so. He likes a late outgoing tide to get that water temperature to really climb for them to get more active. Okay. Water does need to be moving typically. Daytime moving works. I read an article where the evening sunset was a really great time to fish. We catch a lot of fish in the evening, but we also catch them in the morning. So I don't know if it matters much. Dual anchor setups, bow and stern, really help you position. Also help you lose less tackle. Fish finder rig, if you're throwing around the south jetty and places like that, I like a long leader, a long fish finder rig, just enough weight, of course, to keep it on the bottom. And the nice thing about the fish finder rig with the long leader is it does let that bait get moving around a little bit more, lets them see it. I use a simple teaser rig with a hook on the up top and then a weight on the bottom. That's on the video of lures. Um, I think that works really well. I usually use 30 pound mono, 30 to 50, a 4 0 beak hook. They also make tall jig heads, and the um, lead pot in Dagsboro sells those, and they work really well. I don't use them as much because uh, they tend to be a little pricier than the uh, simple teaser rig setups. So uh, they work good, but uh, they, they tend to be a little pricier. Crabs, white leggers will be around. Sand fleas will, or mole crab will be around. Shrimp and clam. I've read where clams are considered the popular choice in the spring because the togs' mouths are a little softer over the winter. I'm a little skeptical on whether that, that matters or not. But anyway, clam, I have seen them caught on clam, but uh, I have certainly caught them on shrimp, sand fleas, and crabs, no doubt about it. This is the hook we use, a 4 size beak hook, um, and I was that was suggested to me by Lady Atlantic Tackle, and I think it's an excellent choice, so I recommend that. Flounder. Verrazano Bridge, the Thoroughfare, and the Thoroughfare Flats are the had the most reports of catches early spring. Uh, realistically, you're going to see flounder being caught middle to late March around here, but it re really doesn't get going until mid-April. That's when it really kind of gets going in this area. These three places that I just mentioned were by far the places people mention catches earliest and best. So I would absolutely, we are going to be trying those places. The duck blinds near the Verrazano Bridge are also places. The, um, the West Bridge of the 90 bridges, there's two bridges. The West Bridge is where I've personally caught a keeper uh, early season. So um, that was my first keeper caught almost my first flounder of the season, I think, uh, a season or two ago, was right there. So there's reports of north north of the 90 bridge. So basically you're looking at kind of muddy water, heats up quicker, uh, holds water or holds heat a little better. So those are areas, you know, certainly near ledges you want to look, okay? If you can find some warm, clean water with flounder, you're obviously going to have success, okay? Don't hesitate to slow trow to cover ground if needed. And again, mid-April seems to be the time it gets going. So fish finder rig, weights based upon current. I've used extremely lightweight when I fish from kayaks or from land. 
just enough to get it down and slowly retrieve it back. But realistically, Mary likes about a quarter ounce. I'll go about a half ounce and up in most places. Three-way rigs are great to use. 20 to 30 pound floor leaders, I usually use 20. Uh, 4-0 circle or J-hooks, okay? Circle hooks are used by John McFalls. I think it's a great thing to use because you gut hook them less since we catch tons of non-keepers here. That also reduces mortality. So circle hooks are a great thing to try. Simple teaser rig is my favorite way to fish for flounder. I put a bucktail on the bottom, about a foot up from that. I put a, uh, the bucktail, I put a teaser. It can be a simple hook. It can be a little teaser like fly, anything like that. If you watch John Skinner's video, he's a master of this kind of fishing. Certainly give him a look and I'll learn how to do it. Minnows are available for live bait. Gulp, I like pink in the spring. Uh, gulp minnow combinations are great as well. So put a piece of gulp on, throw a minnow on top of it through the eyes or nose and uh, go at it. Z-Man grub tails are working better. They've uh, got better scent on them now. They smell terrible and they certainly are beginning to work well. They are pretty durable. Frozen shiners, and, uh, shiners on the, in the spring is great. So please use them. Simple to use. Uh, you can use that high load simple teaser setup I was talking about. Put them on your bucktails or bear jig head and a simple 4-0 hook above that and put some shiners. And you can put multiple on a hook. Sometimes I put four on a hook just to increase it. If you get a half one bitten off, don't take the time to take it off. Just add more shiners to it. Drop it right back down, okay? Any skirted minnows or shiner combinations also help your chances. You improve the presentation quality. So beads, blades, skirts, things like that work really well. Don't hesitate to use them. They do work. So that's the end of this, okay? Get your boat and gear ready. Uh, make a fishing plan off what I've told you. Uh, also, of course, what you know from your personal experience, what you find on social media as well, okay? Also, when you go out and fish, remember, you got to be confident. Everything I've talked about here is proven results. They are going to work for you. You are going to catch fish if you get your gear set up right. You find locations for fish. You fish these areas at the right time. You're going to catch fish. So be confident when you do it, okay? Pay attention and focus. Don't be on your phone. Don't be casual about it. Focus a little bit. With these techniques, you're going to catch fish. Here's the last posting from a uh, hooked on ocean fish in ocean. This was posted April 10th of last year. And obviously there's a flounder caught on a three-way rig around the route 90 bridge, just as an idea, go get them, have fun.